Hey everyone, it's Matt with McGee Farms again, and got to be doing a little work on the Jeep today. I uh, haven't been able to get as many videos out as I'd like to here. I've uh, been going out of town for work a lot, and uh, since I've been back, what little time I have, I've been playing catch-up. I've just been so far behind and had a lot of issues with stuff breaking down to where I just had to get in there and didn't have time to grab the camera out. Now, the Jeep, I love my Jeep. I've had multiple Jeeps over the years when I got this one. I'm the original owner of this 2006 uh, Jeep Wrangler LJ Unlimited. And uh, I kind of decided that's going to be my last Jeep because I just really love this Jeep. And uh, I've got 159,000 miles on it, so I'm overdue for changing the shocks. The shocks are pretty easy to change out if you do them regularly. Unfortunately, you know, they... They were still working good, so I just never got around to them. I'm starting to get the death wobble a little bit, so I'm going through. And, uh, you know, shocks, steering dampener or steering stabilizer, whatever you want to call it, tires, and track bar. Uh, usually it's in there somewhere. Usually it's going to be either the track bar or the tires. And I haven't gotten to change them out yet, but that's coming. But I have done the uh, steering stabilizer. And I'm doing the shocks right now. I got into the driver's side one yesterday, and it was a nightmare. A 20-minute job turned into about a three, four-hour job. So I'm going to go through how to change these step-by-step, step, and hopefully I'm going to be able to do the passenger side one the easy way. But if not, I'm going to show you the extreme way to do it if, you can't get your shocks off and you know if it comes down to that uh, even if I am able to do it the easy way I'm gonna go through how I did it the extreme way and it worked it was just a lot more work it was a lot of trial and error this should be a lot quicker because even if I have to go to that extreme I did it yesterday and I know what to expect and I know what tools to use so we're gonna get into this and kind of show you uh, where everything is all right, now if you get it the easy way, you can do it really without even taking the, the wheel and the tires off. Uh, yesterday, it just got to the point I had to, and I was making a video and I just said, you know what, screw it at that point. I was pretty frustrated. But first thing you're gonna wanna do, you got a couple of bolts that have to come off. The bottom ones, hopefully, it's a little dark, hopefully you can see it, you gotta hit them. And the nuts are underneath. You want to hit those with uh, some good penetrating oil. I got some PB Blaster here. There's also one up on the top that has to come out. And I'm, I've already coated them, but I'm, I'm going to give them another coat too. You can never have too much on there. So you get the, you get the coating on. And you got the bottom two. The first ones that I hit, these are a 13 millimeter, and you basically put a 13 millimeter on top, get you a ratchet on the bottom, and uh, you know 13 millimeter, hit it, come come off, and then you pull the shock up, and you just move it out of the way. When I did it, uh, it didn't want to come out. There was still a lot of compression. I used a little bit of a pry bar underneath. And that's why I ended up uh, taking the wheel off originally, just because the uh, brake line was right here, and I didn't want to mess up the brake line at all. Now, the top one, there's a couple ways you can get to it. You can wrench it from up here, and if you have a ratcheting wrench, uh, it makes it a lot easier. You do that, you get uh, some vice grips, and you clamp onto here. The problem I was having is these are still factory ones, and there's nowhere to grab onto up here. And so I ended up cutting them off with a Sawzall. And I will, like I said, whether I have to do it or not, I'm gonna kinda show you how to do that just in case you get into the same trouble that I had. Now, coming up to the engine here, when you're taking the top bolt off, if you wanna get to it from the top, 
you can do it on both sides. You're going to see there's a little hole right here. And your ratchet, you got to get an extension, but your ratchet will go down and pop right onto the, uh, the nut that you have to get to. Now, if you come over to this side, and I'm not doing it this way, but I'm going to show you because a lot of people do. Eh, it might be easier, it might not, uh, because I just really couldn't get uh, the ratchet to work with it. I'm not even going to mess with it. But you take your top off on your air cleaner, take your element out, and then the box down here should have three bolts. You take those three bolts out, pull it out, and then you got your hole, you can get right to it. Like I said, I'm not going to mess with that because uh, it's just extra work. If it doesn't, and after the day I had yesterday, yeah, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to worry about it. So I'm going to hop, I'm going to grab my tools and I'm going to hop under there and start taking the bottom off. And I decided I'm going to go ahead and take the tire off as I do it. One, it'll be easier to get the camera in there and kind of show you, but also just with the issues I had yesterday, I'm going to take it off now. Maybe Murphy's Law, get lucky. I've got my jack under there. I've got it jacked up. I have a jack stand under because, you know, when you're under a vehicle, even a Jeep that's got some clearance, uh, never, I never trust just one jack. I always try to put some blocks under or something else. I've loosened the lug nuts up. One of the first things I've always done with uh, my Jeep, that's a little tip from someone that's had a lot of Jeeps. These locking lugs they put on there, unless you live in the city or you're driving it in the city all the time, uh, yeah, I take those off and just buy replacement lug nuts, uh, just regular ones, because I've had three Jeeps that I've had them on and they've stripped out and it's left me stranded in the middle of nowhere. So, you know, I'd rather take that risk. And like I said, I'm this Jeep's, uh, I don't think it's ever been in the city. So, uh, not that worried about it. The little tool they give you with your Jeep I broke in so many of those, it's not even funny. So I always get me a big breaker bar with a ratchet uh, or a, a bit, you know, long socket that I can put in there. That way I can put my whole weight on it if I need to. I've got them loosened, so now I'm just going to take it and I'm going to pop it on my impact driver and take them off the rest of the way and then we'll get in there. Okay, so I got these two bottom bolts out. Ideally, if you don't have a whole lot of tension on your shocks, you can kind of just grab it and work it, work it up a little bit. Unfortunately, there's still a lot of pressure on these shocks. So to do that, I pretty much, uh, uh, what I did is I took a little pry bar and I got under here and I just pried it, pulled it up and then scooted it off, off to the side and it worked fine. So I'm going to grab my pry bar right now. So I got under it with the pry bar, pulled it out, and I've kind of pulled it down, released the pressure. Now we got to get up here, and this is the hard part. Uh, there actually is a little bit of a screw on top, but like I said, mine, it made no difference. And I ended up uh, basically having to come in right here with a Sawzall and cut this out. So let's see how this one's going to go. Hopefully I'll get lucky with this side. So let me lock on, but yeah, it is not budging at all. So... Again, I'm going to do a little bit of an extreme way, but you know what? It works. It's easy. You just want to be careful because you don't want to, you know, cut in here anywhere. But I've got my Sawzall. i got a new metal blade that I started with yesterday. And uh, take about 15 minutes because uh, it takes a little while to cut through. But it'll pop that right off and then the top just uh, slides right out. So I'm grabbing the Sawzall now and going to have at it. Okay, so I got in there with the Sawzall. I got it cut in half. Basically, you got a rod, just a small rod that's in there. That's all you got to cut. But uh, when I was trying yesterday, like this is just plastic. I cut around this. I tried to get the vice grips on the rod. And it just kept spinning. I even tried cutting the rod to see if I could get to it a little better and still no luck. So I got this off, the upper piece. You know, it's probably going to be a little hot, but uh, it's off too. 
So, uh, yeah, now that's done. That's the hard part. It's over with. Now I just got to put the new shock on, which, uh, you know, is a, is a piece of cake. But if you got the, like I said, if you got the stock ones, if they don't come off, if this top piece just keeps spinning, uh, you got to do what you got to do. Uh, if you do that and you are hitting it with the Sawzall, you can get in there as long as you got a long enough blade. But you're going to be hitting this rubber and a lot of smoke's going to come out too. So just be prepared. Uh, you know, you are going to have kind of smoke from the, uh, the rubber as it kind of starts melting from all the friction. So I'm going to grab the new shocks and we're going to start putting it back together. Here's the shocks that I got for them. These are uh, Monroe. They're kind of a, they're not a upper high performance, but they're a good kind of middle of the road. They're Monroe Matic Plus. And I got the front and back ones. If I bought the four pack, it wasn't that bad. I'm going to put a link at the bottom in the comments. So, you know, hey, if, uh, if you're changing yours out, TJ's, LJ's all use these same shock. And uh, they're, they're a decent shock, not too expensive. I don't really use lift kits on my Jeeps. I know some guys get into that, but uh, that's just, just not my thing. Nothing wrong if you do, but uh, I've been, you know, I'm 50 years old. I've been running Jeeps since I was 12 years old, and I've never been stuck with a stock Jeep with oversized tires on it. So I'm, I'm happy with that, and I... You know, one less thing to break down on me on the trail. It's kind of kind of the way I look at it. But like I said, if that's your thing, hey, more power to you. I'm not knocking you uh, to each their own. You take a Jeep, you build it, and you make it your own. Is kind of my my motto. So we're gonna grab these and start putting them together. Okay, I got my shock here. I've got the the little rubber bushing and the metal piece that's on it. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna take the bottom around the brake line. I'm going to feed this up in there and then do this with two hands. I'm uh, going to grab this and I'm going to kind of pull it up a little bit and pop it into place right here. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to put the, the nuts and the bolts back in. The bottom ones, you got to reuse what came with it or buy new ones. I'm just reusing the ones that were in there are still good. The top one, it does come with the with everything for it. And, uh, you know, same thing as, as below. We're going to put bushing on. Got the little plate. I'm going to put my screw in. And, like I said, just kind of finger tighten it a little bit. Now I'm going to grab the other two that I held back that came out of the bottom. And same thing. We're going to... I can get these out. Got to set the camera down. All right, the top one's done. Now it's just tightening up these two bottom ones. Got my impact driver. I've got the wrench on there. Impact's just going to go right on the nut and uh, tighten both of them up. And then it's just putting the tire back on and it's good to go. All right, we got her done. She is back together. And uh, this was so much easier. Uh, normally, like I said, 20, 30 minute job. I think it was like four hours yesterday in the heat. So I wasn't very happy, uh, with it, but now that I know what I'm doing, this one went, uh, quite a bit easier and I'm going to be doing another video coming up, uh, on the back shocks, show how to do that. The, uh, from what I remember doing this in the past, I believe the passenger side's not too bad, but the driver's side is kind of a pain because you got the gas tank in the way when you do the rear ones. But we'll tackle that another time. I'm pretty much uh, done for now. So <laughs> uh, that's got to be it. Also, probably uh, going to do another video here in the next couple of days about some of the modifications, upgraded LED headlights, uh, upgraded LED floodlights, and uh, light bar that I put on there and uh, talk a little bit about that. I've had these on now for about two years, so I've had time to decide if I like it or I hate it. And uh, a little trial and error, but actually uh, I do kind of like those. And like I said, I'll go through kind of the ones I got, how I did the wiring, 
and all that, and some other modifications. So, if you like the video, uh, you're a Jeep fanatic like me, or uh, you just like off-road or like seeing how things are done, consider giving us a like, maybe subscribing to the channel, leaving us a comment. I read them all, they're all appreciated, and I try to respond to each one, and it helps the channel grow. Till next time, this is Matt from McGee Farms. Have a great day.